Good evening, everyone, and welcome to class. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, depending on your time zone. Well, welcome to today's class um, on the local government administration for cohort 13. And I will just give five more minutes for other people to join in because from what I can see, we have a low number of people in class. So in the next five minutes, by 17.05, we kick start. Our facilitator is already in class. Thank you very much.
Okay, good evening, everyone. This is 17.05, and it's time for class. So right about now, I'll just give a brief intro on our facilitator for today, um, Dr. Hamidu. So before I go ahead, um, once you come into the room, just put your names on the chat box and your party, yes, because we've all been assigned to different parties. So please put your name and your parties in the chat box. Thank you very much. So I'm just going to give a brief introduction on our facilitator for today's class, Professor Abdul Hamidu Abdullahi. is a PhD holder in local government and development studies with many years of working experience at administrative managerial level, field work and volunteerism. He commenced his working career with Nuhu Balami Polytechnic Saria, then Kaduna College of Advanced Studies, where he rose to the rank of senior lecturer. He was the head of Department of General Studies and later Deputy Dean of Federal Polytechnic Nasarawa. He presently works at Amadou University, Amadou Bello University Zaria, where he's involved in teaching, research, and community development as the development of local government and development studies. He has held many other responsibilities, such as Secretary, National Conference Organizing Committee of the Department of Local and Government and Development Studies, Staff Advisor of Association of Studies of Local Government and Development Studies, Patron of Junior Chambers International, JCI, Coordinator of Diploma Programs, Editorial Board Member of Zaria Journal of Arts and Liberal Studies, ZA Joel, in terms of writing and publishing, academic research work and presentations. He has many conference papers, journal articles and chapters in some books to his credit. Professor Abdul is the producer of the radio program in Hausa language at DITV, Alheri Radio 97.7 FM, Zaria, called Jamara de Jamara, sound and gown in English an assistant research fellow at Center for Democratic Development Research and Training, CDDAT, member of Board of Trustees, FUNSA Community College of Health, Science and Technology, FUNSA, Chairman of Initiative for Orphans and Vulnerable Persons, NGO, Zaria and Petron, Harmony Youth, Muncha, I hope I got that right, Zaria, He's also a member of Community Development Charter, CDC, and the Ward Integrity Companion, WIC, of his ward, Dogarawa Sabungari Zaria, under the auspices of Aid Foundation, a research NGO involved in advocacy and development. Professionally, he's a member of International Association of Community Development, IACD, Scotland, the West African Research and Innovation Management Association, Burima, Nigeria, and a member of Network Against Child Trafficking Abuse and Labor, Natal. He is the Deputy Director of North Central of the Electoral College, Nigeria. He's also an Associate Professor of Local Governance and Development Studies from the prestigious Amedou Berlin University area. So, ladies and gentlemen, with this heavy profile I've just called, I've just, wait, I just wait, read wait, out wait. it. Talia, Talia, you didn't complete it. And he taught the ED in <laughs> the university, complete it. And he taught the executive director in university, then it's complete. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is right. So, we are ready for Dr. Abi this evening. If you have any concerns on local government, he's going to break it down. Please, if you have questions, drop it in the chat box. So by the end of the class, we take all of that. Thank you very much. Welcome, Prof. Uh, you, you, uh, good, good day, good day, good day, good day. Wherever you're joining him from, uh, I've been... I've been a bit disorganized by seeing that my, my director is around. So I'm also under examination. Uh, in any case, uh, I want to change, I want to just bring an innovation 
And uh, I, with the permission of the director, before we start, I want to give the students uh, uh, maybe just five minutes or ten min five minutes at most, or ten minutes to uh, go to their rooms, and then I've just created the rooms. Uh, I want them to just spend uh, like uh, maybe ten minutes in the rooms, and then from there, uh, some questions will be sent across so that uh, they will answer the question. And then from there, we now proceed to our main job for today. Uh, I don't know whether they have seen the rooms. Uh, is it visible now? Yes, I can see join breakout room. It's visible. OK, so please uh, join the breakout rooms quickly. And then uh, I will put in the question in the chat box for each of the groups. Uh, they will answer the question. Huh? They will answer the question in 10 minutes. Have you seen the question too in the chat box? Uh, have you seen the question in the chat box? Yes, sir. Okay. So each, uh, they will go to the groups. And then they will answer the question, pick somebody as their uh, leader who will now be given three minutes to answer the question. And then we'll now come back and see what we can do. Uh, the essence of this is to test the student's ability uh, beforehand to see if they are uh, conversant with local government uh, administration. Because most of the time we see uh, even among our big shots, some don't even know the headquarters of their local government. So uh, uh, with that, I think, have they all gone to the room or not yet? I think we still have more people in class. Yeah. Please join the room. Or do I still have to send the rooms again? Yes, sir. I...
Please, those of you who have not gone to your rooms, what are you waiting for? You have not been assigned rooms? Okay, you have uh, how many minutes more? You have five minutes to go. Those who have not joined the rooms, what is happening? Okay, are we back? Uh, the host, can you close the room? So that we can send them back. Okay. Okay, uh, Lisa, can you share my... Yeah, Victor, what do you want to say?
Now put it in a presentation mode. It's like it's hanging on the screen. Hello? Okay. Are we all back now? Okay, can we now start? We are. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Am I audible enough? Please, somebody to tell me. Am I audible enough, host? Ah, thank you very much. Thank you, Mubarak. Just hold on a little bit. Or do you stop sharing so that I can share from my end here? Hello? Okay. Just give me some seconds. Let me share my screen. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to get it too. <laughs> it's like it is hanging somewhere. Uh, bye. Yeah, I don't know, some part of. Uh, Lisu, I'm finding it difficult to share from my end. Please go ahead and try. Then why we continue? Uh, basically, uh, what we say, local government administration, what we are saying is that, what we are saying is that uh, we are talking about the lowest, the lowest of the low of the tier of government in any federation. 
most of the time in the federal state, uh, local government administration is uh, usually the last tier of uh, government, but recognized from the constitution. Now, in the case of uh, Nigeria, this is how the out, out, uh, outline of the presentation will be. Uh, we are going to discuss local government in uh, other clams and then local government in Nigeria, intergovernmental and fiscal relation, then challenges of local government, then we'll conclude and then we'll make a recommendation. Next slide, please. Next slide. So basically, uh, local government in other countries, for example, in communist country, it is a centralized system. That means there is no difference between uh, the, 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 the staff and the, uh, and the managers of the local government and the party system. Because in communist system, the party system that is operating. Why in the French system, there's also the lack of autonomy. So when people talk of autonomy of local government in Nigeria, uh, they don't understand what is happening in other part of the world. Now, local government system is operated on two tiers. One, there is a parliamentary system, and then there is a presidential system. In the parliamentary system, everything is centrally controlled. Why in the in the in the in the presidential system there is a separation of power and uh, uh, division of uh, labor? So to some extent, it is the same thing at the parliamentary level. In Nigeria, we have 774 local government with Abuja having six area council. And then it is the laws of local government are based on the laws of the National Assembly and the laws of the state assemblies. Uh, basically, uh, local government in Nigeria begin right from the time of, uh, but in the case of Nigeria, the local government, the presence the local government system is established by the 1999 constitution amended. And it has so many sections, as you can see in the slide when you are shared. And then in the case of Nigeria, the local authority system was one that was operative or operational up to 1960. Then from 19, and then at that time, from 1954 to 1960, local governments were the one that were holding the country in order. They were the major revenue. They were the one that were generating the major revenue for uh, the nation's public expenditure. Then by 1970, the local government has to be distorted due to the historical antecedent of the military rule, the civil war, and then the emergence of petroleum. Before now, before the emergence of petroleum, local government was basically relying, the, the whole country was relying on agriculture and its products. But with the emergence of petroleum, then the, the change, there was a change of direction. And then with the emergence of petroleum and the war, there begins that begins the era of extreme centralization of governance in Nigeria. In order, and that begins the era of taking our resources and responsibilities of the local government uh, to the state government and federal government. Now, by 1976, there was local government reform, and then by 1988, there was also another local government reform, and then by 1990. Primary education and primary health care were transferred to the local government to handle. Then from 1989 to 1933, Nigeria adopted the presidential system of government, wherein there is a separation of powers between the executive and the legislative arms of government. And because of that, the chairman of the local government become chief executive and the chief accounting officer of the local government. And these things are clearly stated in the constitution. It's a constitution that now gives us the ability to understand integral. And the areas in which local government are assigned responsibility uh, by the state. Now, uh, basically, Basically, uh, then the most significant aspect of local government is the issue of fiscal federalism, financial matters. Now, Section 162 provided that any amount that is to the, to the local government will be into a joint account 
And as such, each state shall maintain a special account to be called state joint local government account, in which all allocations of local government councils for the federation are put into that account. And as we shall come to see, the local government will now have to now be subjected to uh, the constitution and then subjected to certain powers. Now, in the terms of the structure of local government, sorry, I'm very fast because I want us to discuss more. So immediately I finish, we can always. Uh, so if you have your questions, please keep your questions so that later we can discuss it. Uh, so in the structure of the local government, we have uh, uh, the chairman, the vice chairman, or deputy chairman, secretary of the local government. We have councillors, supervisory and non-supervisory. And then we have set of local governments including set of departments in the, at the local government levels, including works, education, and social development, finance, personal administration, health, uh, agriculture, and legal. And then some cases, they add uh, uh, what you call research and development, or research and planning. That's on some advanced local governments. Uh, now, the, what is this? the other structure of the local controlled or tailored by the Ministry of Local Government Affairs that handles all anything finance. They will also have the Local Government Service Board. They will have the State Audit Tour. And then we have uh, uh, the Local Government Council that are supposed to make laws for the local government, examine monthly expenditure, then basically, what are the functions of the local government? This is clearly stated in the constitution. To help inculcate positive citizenship, provide basic amenities, promote democracy. Uh, then how do the local government operate in Nigeria? It operates based on committee system. Then there is the finance and general purpose committee. There is the education committee. There is a junior staff management committee. There is a peace and security committee. There is a police and community relations committee. And then they have others such as disciplinary, monitoring, appropriation, tax force for revenue collection, uh, ETC, depending upon the local government. But the local government also have socioeconomic functions that it's supposed to undertake. That means including supervision of projects, reporting cases of unnecessary delay in terms of execution of projects, ensure that projects are completed and not vandalized, and ensuring that there is there we have socioeconomic, social mobilization and sensitization. All of you know about the polio something. It is handled at the local government level and then encouraging people to key into government programs to form community and development association and make sure that children uh, at school age attend to uh, school. Then it has also the Peace and uh, Harmony Committee. Then it, at the local government level, we have some critical stakeholders. These critical stakeholders, the first one is the traditional rulers. They are the custodian of the people's culture, the symbol of community identity, and as such, they are held in high esteem across the country, right? But you will be you will be shocked to understand that no matter how high the Oni of Ife is, the Oba of Lagos is, the Emir of Kano is, he is still under his local government chairman, who may be a primary school leader. If you consider now the highest number of generals who are traditional rulers. All of them are still under that their local government. So we have other stakeholders, traditional and staff, retired public and civil servant, businessmen, politicians, women, and the rest of them. Now it will interest you to understand that by May 2019, the national, the Nigerian. The Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit issued guidelines to guard against overbearing influence of the state uh, in terms of administration of local government uh, finances. The state took the, the establishment to court, but the establishment won, won the case against uh, the state governors. So because of that, uh, 
uh, it is constitutionally accepted that it is unconstitutional for state government to resolve the powers of uh, uh, the local government. But that's another game altogether because up to now, that has not uh, seen the light of the day. So because of that, the local government lack autonomy because all these finances is centered into uh, the coffins of the local government. And then when the former assembly tried to amend the constitution or that give the local government uh give the local government uh, ability to be independent or uh, have autonomy only 26 uh state house of assembly uh accepted uh to uh be part of that uh, game now i will now want to put a pause here because one of the slide is now going to talk about uh what the local government is all about. So let me just, or let me continue, and then uh, we'll come back to, uh, we'll jump that particular slide. Then we'll now ask, okay, okay or, or let me let me just give uh, uh, some minutes to the presenters. So please, you can drop the slide. You can drop the slide so that we now see, please, uh, do we, we are going to operate it in a digital way. So group one, please, who is presenting on your behalf? You have your question. Or do I repeat the question in the chat again? Group one, who is giving us, raise your digital hand and then I will see you and allow you to talk. Can somebody speak on group one? Please unmute all of them so they are less here. Maybe they are not muted. Chief host. Okay, okay just raise your hands and then I unmute you to speak. Good. Nobody for group one yet? Okay, we, we don't have the whole day, so can we go to group two? Who is presenting for group two? Okay. Uh, uh, go ahead. You have two minutes or three minutes to present what you have. Sorry, I, I want to ask what's the question. Pardon? I'm in group you are not audible enough. I'm in group one. I just, I just, uh, what's the question all about? Sorry, I'm in group one. My name okay, no, you. That means you are not present during the discussion. You are told to go to a chat room. So the discussion should have taken place in the chat room, not here. So drop your hand. I joined group one and I know some people who are there. So drop your hand. Ahmed, Mohamed, Labo, are you in group one or group two? Or mute him to talk. I am in group two, sir. Okay, go ahead and tell us. Yeah, we have discussed uh, the question is all about how many local government area council we had in Nigeria. But the contradiction is that the question came with the local government council and area. So based on what we deliberate on the group, there is no local government council. It's only local government area, which is 774. Yes. But uh, some brought a suggestion about development areas under local so, government. So the assignment here that uh, we are undergoing through, although my own group, I have been opt out. I don't know, maybe it's due to a technical problem, but in Adamawa State, we have 21 local government, but the local government area council on that development areas is yet to be known to me because I want to do so. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. That question was given to you deliberately so that you can be able to, uh, that means group two have succeeded in differentiating to us area council, a local government areas and local government councils, right? Yes, so sir. You, should note, you should know that in the constitution, it says local government area, not local government area council. But okay. in some literature, you come around, you come about when they say local government council, they are also referring to local government area. Uh, area. Thank you okay. very much. Group three, anybody for group three? Quickly, please raise up your hand. Drop your hand, I'm a level. Group three. 
Nobody? Group three, nobody yet? Okay, group four. Okay, group three, is that uh, Agogo? Go ahead, unmute Agogo, please. Somebody to unmute him. Chief host, can you unmute Agogo? Yes, I've asked him to unmute. Okay, Agogo, go ahead. Are you not answering for group three? Group four. Nobody? Nobody for group four? Group five. Cool. Go ahead. Hello. Go ahead. We can hear you. Okay. Austin, I represent group three. Um, the question is about um, the the departments of local government councils in Nigeria. Uh, though we didn't see the question and we don't discuss it, but. Let me attempt as I, my understanding can carry me. Uh, basically speaking, I know there is an um, administrative and finance department in charge of um, general administration and right, human resources. Right. Just, just mention that. Okay, we, we have the legislative de department. We also, I know of the works and engineering department, health department, there's education, there's agriculture department, there's env environmental department and the social welfare those are the ones i know thank you oh thank you very much group four anybody anybody for group four group five group five okay uh thank you very much let's go back to our slide uh can you share the slide again please sorry <laughs> Can you meet Salma, Ummu Salma? Okay, uh, the slide we are at is uh, go ahead, not this slide, the next one. The slide we are, yes, you see, uh, this is even the cross of the matter. Local governments all over the world, state governments all over the world, the federal states all over the world operate within a given environment. Now, the question I wanted to ask is, which of this environment is more uh, effective? Which of this environment really influence the operation of the local government? You can see there is political environment, economic environment, social environment, and the rest of them. Next slide. So these are very, very significant at the level of the local government. Now, now, government, because of the cumbersome nature of the structure of the local so the local government to enforce laws and the rest of them at the local government level. Local government, especially the rural local government. Next slide. Local government. Next slide. Are you with us? Next slide. So, in conclusion, in conclusion, you see, local government is, is accepted structure, but then it has a lot of full of centralization in some cases. Next slide. And then the local government system is clearly uh, based on the constitution. So, but we have some recommendation in which we don't have the time to go into details of discussing the recommendation. Uh, when you get the slide, you will go through it. We have very little time for discussion. Next slide. Uh, this Now, the, the, I insist on putting this up because Local Lagos state revenue model is a very important model. Local uh, Lagos state government was able to, as far back as 2010, to organize that revenue should be based on highly urbanized community 
urbanized community, semi-urbanized communities, and rural communities. Most at times, people said local government don't have internally generated revenue. They should look at this model. You can't generate much revenue from rural communities. Next slide. And the, and the recommendation continue. Next slide. There has to be participation of women, participation of all people, review of development plans. Next slide. Change of budgeting system. Right? Next slide. Now, this is one of my major recommendations, that there must be performance management and appraisal at the local government level. That means that we must have priorities, we must have monitoring, and we must have balanced uh, scorecard. Next slide. Now, then, what incentive can we have for performing for local governments that are in, uh, that are performing? This is one of my major suggestions also that there has to be the financial incentive and the non-financial incentive in order to be able to motivate local governments so that they can be able to perform. Next slide. Wow. Thank you for listening. Next slide. Questions and feedback. So back to you, Chief Host. Uh, any question? So far? So we are Please, back to thank class. You. Thank you very much, sir, for that very interesting class. So I believe we all have questions concerning the local government that we would like to ask Prof, because he's here to answer every question we have concerning the local government. Just as how the ED said before he left, he also taught him in the university. So you should know that he has in-depth analysis of everything that is concerned the local government. So you can ask your question by raising your hands or dropping your questions in the chat box. Okay. Okay. Um... Dr. John, I've asked you to unmute and ask your questions. Okay. Good evening, Prof, and good evening, everyone. Thank you for the wonderful presentation, sir. I, I have a, a little question in view of uh, the recent development as concerns local governments, the passing of the Senate autonomy bill for local governments. I know it's been, it, it was uh, the last administration tried to do that, but it didn't go through. Now I've I've gone through the what the Senate had done, but I don't know. There's this section that has, is talking about the State House of Assemblies adopting it or something. I don't know. It's still not very clear. So I just need some clarity on what exactly they want us to do. And secondly, will it be feasible in the context of our country? Because it's looking like the governors may still frustrate this process because most states most state governors actually suffer with the local government funds to run their state so are we sure this is going to go through because the state governors may still find a way to sabotage this and then if it's going to be subjected to local uh, different states and their house of assemblies to adopt and all that the workability is what is a major concern for me, sir. Maybe just throw more light on it so that we'll have a proper understanding. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, you see the issue of the autonomy. Huh? We are also having some reservation. Why? Because uh, during the Babangida military era, he granted autonomy for a very short period of time to the local government uh, council. So what happened is that it led to the imprisonment of many of the chairmen of the local government because the chairman of the local government and the director of finance or admin are the signatories to the account. 
So when the when the allocation came to the account, they all of them just packed the whole thing from the local government account and ran away. So they were arrested. So it means that uh, why, on the other hand, you are thinking of giving them autonomy, you must, on the other hand, also try to put in some their excesses. My in such a way that the state the, is not a staff of the local government. So you can see he's somebody very far from the local government uh, monitoring the local government. Why a very big section of the constitution that the National Assembly members don't want to amend is that, that part of the constitution that stated that local government councils must have be members of the economic uh, economic community uh, co committee of the state government where in their project and the rest of them will be discussed at that very level so it is subject it is subject to the approval of that committee before any project can be implemented and that is why they always have room for what you call joint state local government project. So they remove money, for example, for fertilizer. They remove, there's what we call extra, extra budgetary expenditure. For example, each local government chairman must take care of police, which is at the federal level, must take care of custom when he has it in his department. He must assist, in short, any security organ that is uh, in his own uh, domain. And then from the coffers of the local government, and then he must also, if the first lady of the federation is coming to his local government, he is one to fit foot her bill. And if the first lady of the governor is coming to your local government, you are one to foot her bill. If the first lady of the chairman is going for an, uh, a visit uh, for maybe an advocacy campaign, the local government will have to foot a bill. So all those things they are not looked at because they are issues of siphoning uh people's uh the yeah the people's revenue. That's what I can say. So and then again, uh why it is also not feasible is because if for example you have a functional local government chairman and he's very active and he does everything, automatically people want him to be the state governor. But then the powers that be will not want him to be the state governor. So the best thing is that if you are a chairman of a local government, you cannot even perform so that you cannot even attempt to be a governor one day. At the end, you may end up being a House of Assembly member, but then there will also be instances of corruption against you, which is killing the spirit of uh, ascending from one position to other. In the case of France, for example, in France, anybody who, has, who you see is the president in France must have started at the local level before rising up. But in the case of Nigeria, it is not like that. Even in Britain, it is almost the same thing. You will start as a councillor. You remember even uh, Barack Obama, he was a senator. Many He was a House of Rights member, senator, before he now rise up because of his credentials. But in the case of Nigeria, the system does not encourage that. Anybody? Okay, thank you very much, um, Prof. Yeah, okay, some of you are putting... Yes, sir. ...to uh, see the... ...see the... ...been giving groups. Well, that is an emergency... That's an emergency uh, preparation. Just to prepare your mind that subsequently, if you don't come to class early, you are likely not to be part of a group and then it is going to affect your assessment. So this, uh, this is a, a preamble. So next time, come to class early or else, you will not be part of the, and it will affect your assessment. Uh, thank you, Ref. Mark, go ahead quickly. Unmute, Ref. Okay. I've asked you to unmute me. Hello. Can you go with me, Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So you can also do it. It's uh, making a hell of noise. Can I hear you? Any other person, please? 
Okay, we have some questions in the chat box. Go ahead and um, read them. From Mohammed, he says, to be elected a local government chairman, what are the qualifications? The usual qualification in the university, secondary school leaver. That's a qualification. And then the okay. community will now decide who will be your godfather to buy the form for you, who will foot your campaign uh, bills, that's all. Ulmo Salma, go ahead. Okay. You have Ulmo Salma. Salama. Okay, I've asked him to mute. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Ulmo Salama. Thank you, bro, for your presentation. And We've lost you. In local communities, environmental degradation, environmental. Can you hear me now? I said my yeah, concern, but... the concern I want to raise is on issue environmental degradation issue with regards to local communities. Hello? Hello, sir. Go ahead, go ahead. We are hearing you. What's the question? Okay. Yes. My question is, how do, considering that the uh, local government is the closest uh, government to the people, to the grassroots, those who are affected by the consequences of uh, this uh, where some of this uh, uh, money making or revenue <laughs> and these people cannot reach government the this... we have lost time bro. what's the next question the Uba, constitution has amended this state shall protect your, just bear with us. Your, your network is cracking very seriously. Now Can they we cannot uh, hold, uh, they cannot hold. Okay, what's the next question on the chat? Can you so, read the next he, question? On the, chat? the next question I can see here is from someone in Sumeda. <laughs> okay. He says the LCG in Somalia is so weak institution systems that you know the country is recovering approximately 30 years of failure, state and government institutions were collapsed. So currently the country is rebuilding process. My question regarding the above narration, doctor, who you who you recommending the building of LCG in Somalia and suggestions? Is it Somalia or? Yes, 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 sir. Somalia. Yes, sir. Uh, the issue of Somalia is the issue that we should all take. Uh, it's a very big lesson for us in Nigeria because I try to study the Somalian uh, issue uh, at a very uh, small level. You see, it's, the country have one tribe. They, have, they are all made up of one tribe, but based on serious, uh, uh, maybe non stake or maybe what you can call uh, uh, houses, based on houses. So the, the, the conflict there is based on houses. This house, this house, this house, this community, this community, this community. So what I will suggest is you can't talk of development unless you are able to in bring peace. And the way to bring peace is to, first of all, swallow your ego. Swallow your ego. And then now you cannot begin to talk about peace. But as long as your ego is determining uh, the major stake in Somalia uh, is the issue of ego. Most of them 
everybody is feeling here is this. And as such, you have uh, some gangs that are more prominent and they feel they should control everybody. And as such, it becomes a problem. I can't say much other than that. Thank you very much. You know, okay, thank you. Okay, um, someone said, you talk about two types of local government administration as parliamentary and presidential. Can you please explain the difference between the two and also the pro and cons? Uh, thank you very much. That is a very good question. Why I consider a very good question is that in Nigeria, officially we're supposed to operate presidential system of government at the local government level. But in some cases, you can see a bit of parliamentary system of local government in some states, which is not official anyway. Then in terms of understanding which is which, I want to state that uh, when you talk about a presidential system, you are talking about a system wherein uh, when you talk about presidential system, you are talking about a system where in the division of power is clearly uh, showing that uh, a division of power is clearly showing that uh, there is the chairman who is the head of the executive council and then there is the legislators who are the head of the uh, legislative council. Right? That's the presidential. But in terms of the parliamentary, it is a mixture of the two. That means the chairman is both a member of the local government council and the, what do you call it? The legislators are also members of the executive council. So that's the basic difference. So that means from the legislators, we get some members who are going to be supervisory councillors, right? And in some cases, uh, and based on that, based on that, now it name means that, uh, for example, if you are elected as a councillor in your ward, right, representing your ward, when you go up there, if likelihood that you can even be made deputy chairman government council. There's a likelihood that you can even be made. But if it is a presidential system, it's not possible. That's the basic difference. Okay, thank Any you very much. Question? Yeah. Okay, Um, I, I'm sure Rev, his network is back. Let me ask him to unmute. Okay. And you have a uh, Umu Salama to waiting. Okay. Hello, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Hey, yes, I give um, best regards to the up council. Uh, are you there? Go ahead, yes, go ahead. By Satu, what is the responsibility of the unified local government service and their premier? and their regional premiers by strategy. I don't understand the question. By statute, what is the responsibility, yes sir, of a unified local government service and their regional premiers by strategy? Well, I don't get you correctly, but if I get you right, in Nigeria, we don't have regional strata anymore. In Nigeria, we only have the federal government and then the 36 states of the federation. And then we have 774 local government with FCT being uh, uh, a municipal council, having six municipal councils, right? So yes. that is why at times I feel some people talking about Eastern Nigeria, Northern Nigeria. I tell them that uh, constitutionally, now, we don't have anything like northern Nigeria. We have only some states that are in the northern part of, you can only say oh. northern part of Nigeria. Some states Nigeria. that are in eastern part of Nigeria. Some states that are in the western part of Nigeria. Right? And when yes. they say, uh, when they say, for example, when they say uh, 
the the people in eastern Nigeria are dominating the country. I said okay. you are making a mistake because they are not. The, the, it's not the people of the, uh, eastern Nigeria that are dominating the country. Rather, each one of them is coming from a particular local government area and from a particular state. So you should talk about the state and not the whole region. I hope you understand. Because yes. he is not representing the whole region, but he's representing his state. And at the same time, at the local government level, the chairman of the local government is not representing the whole local government. Uh, he's not representing his state, but he's representing his local yes. government. Yes. I hope you understand, right? Yes. So yes, sir. then that is why we have also Asus another power block. You see, in the democracy, is an issue of lobby and power block. So no. we also have another power block at the local government, which is uh, the Association of Local Government Chairmen in the yes. state. They call them Algon, right? They yes, are another Algon. power broker. Yeah. The and, then we also, and then we have also the National Union of Local Government Employees, right? Yes. Which is another yes. power block. So in a democracy, we are operating under a pressure groups. Now, it depends upon the force of such pressure groups that we yes. cannot be able to have uh, a concise local government. So for instance, yes. now, uh, for instance, now, the governors have been able to succeed in ad appointing representative sole administrators, right? Yes. Because yes, the Association of Local Government uh, Chairman has Who is going to be elected as a member of the NOLGE, that's a National Union of Local Government Employees. And as such, you cannot be able to now, inf they cannot be able to influence certain decision apart from the decision that is palatable to whoever owns the piper detects the tune. I hope you are not clear. Not clear Let's sir. take care of Umi Salama. Maybe our network is better now. I've asked it from Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, your network is still breaking. Can you just drop your question in the chat box? Now, somebody, okay, we have answered our question. Now, somebody. Yes, go ahead. What do you say? Okay, the environmental challenges at the local government level, right? Now, I, 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 based on years of experience, I'm not advocating for what you can call informal struggle of making the local government visible. Because the environmental pollution, take for instance now, if you look near your house, if you are not careful, if there is a local hospital there near your house, you be you see that they are dumping the waste, the medical waste, right? Including syringes and the, everything that is being contaminated. They are dumping it near your house, and nobody is talking about it. They are they are burning polythene bags and the rest of them, littering everywhere. So I said, what is non-governmental organizations doing? And what is the stakeholders doing? at the local government level. Retired permanent secretaries, retired military officers, they come and build houses, and there is no provision for waste dump. And it is very unhygienic to burn waste because you are also increasing the ozone level problem. I hope you understand. So that is why my advocacy is that there has to be a concerted effort by members of the community in terms of getting the local government to operate by finding a waste dump first, then by employing some people who will be packing that uh, uh, waste to a, a designated area, right? And making sure that things are not littered indiscriminately and monitoring the, dis the, the usage of polythene bags and the rest of them. Any non-degradable material, we should start, Lagos State government have started it. You know, all this uh, takeaway, 
Lagos State government has, there is a particular takeaway, they call it, is this strong, strong form? The, 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 the one that you can even tear it like a paper, right? It is the most dangerous environmental hazard. It blocks the drainage system and it does not degrade till after more than 50 years, right? So everything has to be done, a, a proactive measure has to be done by the local government in order to solve that problem. Thank you very much, Ummu oh, Salama. I hope I've answered your question. So what I'm saying is that I'm not relying so much on the formal system to do it, but there has to be a pressure from somewhere. Just like you are attending this electoral college, we are giving you a, we are we are telling you how you can be able to become organized so that you can put pressure on the elected people and the stakeholders at the local government level. Thank you. Uh, Ahmed, you are Ahmed Mohammed Labo, you are back. Hello, my own <coughs> contribution. Be louder, please. We can't hear you. I say my own contribution here is that uh, I want to make question and uh, suggestion. Go ahead. So I I have well, I raise your voice. Uh, raise your voice, please. Sorry, me now. Yeah. Okay. I have worked for at least four to five years with the local government under finance department revenue as a revenue collector. Are you hearing me? Go ahead, go ahead. We're yeah. hearing. Okay, as a revenue collector. So to my basic understanding, uh, even though there is no any autonomy that uh, the local government is so far having, but the local government are able to raise up some internal revenue that they are generating through markets, uh, name it, all these. Uh, there's a lot of places there that they can generate revenue companies and so on. And we are depositing those money to the local government accounts and so on. So my question here is that uh, since now the, that the National Assembly and the presidency have been passing or they have passed a bill that is going to give local government autonomy. And under the constitution, it is clearly stated most of the state government's projects like roads, water boats, and so on, waste disposal, and any other policies that is concerning local government is going to be under the executive chairman of the local government and its uh, councillors. So my question here is, now, if this thing has come into light, like uh, the autonomy, how is it uh, the federal, the state government is going to be working hand in hand with the local government in order to see those projects that the local government has executed, uh, are going, uh, have proposed that are going to be executed? So this is my question. Uh, thank you. That was a very good question. That was a very good question. You see, I, I said earlier on, I said earlier on that my fear, I said earlier on that my fear is that uh, the deficiency at the local government is multifaceted. The deficiency at the local government is multifaceted. For instance, now, we, uh, we are talking about autonomy, but at the same time, to what extent can we ask ourselves the capacity of the local government staff? Ahmed Mohammed, for example, you that work at the local government, you yes, would clearly accept. You will clearly accept that uh, even as the at the local government level now, right? Yes. You don't have, for example, a specialist. You don't have, for example, a a a, a, a PhD holder who is who is uh, in accounting department, right? Or a medical yes. doctor who is heading the 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 the, 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 the uh, the, uh, the health department or an engineer, a trained engineer who is holding the, the, the works department. Yes. So in that case, how do you now get, how do you now get, uh, and maybe what you can call, how do you get, uh, uh, Hello? Uh, sorry, uh, Lucy, change my distance. Unmute me, I'm going on another device. My system is getting down. Yeah. 
हेलो ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच सो यू सी दैट वन ऑफ द मेजर प्रॉब्लम वे आर हैविंग एट द लोकल गवर्नमेंट लेवल the capacity of the local government to even handle uh uh such cases for example now in my local government in my local government the chairman is the only certified engineer we don't have anybody who is above the first degree in the local government apart from the even the chairman is engineering is the first degree engineering right so tell me now how will there be productivity how are they going to manage in short that is why for example now i've given you i've given the whole class assignment go and see how many local government are on the are visible are on the website that have a website that you can visit and say oh this is the local this is my local government so how can you for example interact eh bring investors into your local government and it is deliberate because local government staff are the least paid in the country and as such who will now become for example a phd holder who will now decide to be in the local government when he can be in the state or at the federal government level any more than at the local government level so what i'm saying is that the capacity the capacity is a very big problem and that is why when you are talking about the autonomy you should also remember to talk about do we have the capacity of people who are going to stop incremental budgeting or leave zero budgeting or uh, implement zero budgeting who are going to make legislative legislations that are people centered who are going to who are able to query the chairman and then find a way impeaching him when the chairman is also the godfather of some of the uh, elected councillors because he sponsored their employment and he sponsored their election so you can see so many questions that uh, need to be answered and then at the other level in terms of that at the level of, level of the elected members then we now come to the issue of the members of staff of the local government what incentive can you give them i mentioned it i said there yeah, is financial and non financial incentive what i'm heading towards is that you cannot talk about production you cannot talk about performance unless you also talk of performance appraisal and management so how many as the local government can conceive a project and then execute that project to the conclusion without the interfer- without the influence of the state government or the federal government the capacity we are talking about the capacity now how we understand so those are some of the issues that personally i feel are also to need to be tackled if we are going to talk about autonomy of the local government thank you keep us over to you hello hello Yes, yeah. we can hear. I think he has a follow-up question. Oh, okay, okay. So thank you, sir, for the contribution and the knowledge that you have passed on. Ah, uh, rather, it's not a question because I've been pondering to know the problem first. But it seems like uh, the answer or the suggestion or recommendation that I have for it is going to solve uh, some of the problems, like you have just said, because of capacity and so on. uh human resources that are going to develop and uh, that are well intellectual in the field so all are the problem that you have prescribed but if i am i be able to give a chance to give some one or two recommendation i don't know go ahead go ahead okay so for my own this thing from my own perspective from my own experience based on what i have seen on the local government and so I think before all this autonomy of a team should have been passed to the house and so on. Uh, maybe we are. We, I don't know what is within the bill, so to say. But uh, it should be proper if uh, the bill includes restructuring the local government 
into a level whereby first we need to conduct uh, and, uh, this thing, census, whereby this census will give us the statistics of all the professionals, all the other technical people, all that that are going into this technical and vocational trainings and so on. If this should be included in the bill so that census will begin before the what the, the passage of the distant autonomy in such that each and every local government we will know how many professors we have how many doctors we have how many degree holders based on qualification and so on so from there you see you can then uh, go to the next item which is now how are you going to employ those people that you have statistics on since you you they, 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 sorry to cut you short ahmed they have those statistics at the Ministry of Local Government. They have the statistics because it is based on that statistic that they are paying them salary. Okay. But it's a deliberate attempt to have an unqualified workforce that does not have a direction so that you are the one to determine the direction. Okay. That's the political economy of the local government. Okay. If you cannot do the budgeting, then somebody else will do the budgeting and you cannot defend the budgeting. Then somebody else will defend the budgeting. Take, for example, now, when you take the issue of Kaduna State, according to the 1999 constitution and other states in Nigeria, according to the 1999 constitution amended, the local government are supposed to collect tax yes. <laughs> in the rural market and even the market in some of the metropolitan local government. But who is collecting it? The revenue is collecting it. It's collected by the state. State yeah. officials collect the revenue. Okay. Now, even, even for example, now if you ask your counselor, ask him, do the federal, do the state government remit the VAT that is paid to them to the local no. government coffin account? No. He doesn't know. Because no. the state government, the federal government will collect VAT, value added tax. Yes. And then they will now give the state, and then the state supposed to give some percentage to the local government. Okay. So how many councillors are even aware of that? Not to even talk about staffs of the local government, not to talk about critical stakeholders of the local government. For instance, now, every traditional ruler is being paid from the money of the local government. Yes. And then look at the big, big traditional rulers. Who is buying vehicles for them? The state, the state government. government. You think that it is from the money of the state government? No. no. It ain't bring it out from the local government account to do it. Why in the actual fact, that is why they would not want the traditional rulers to be under, to be under the state government because the amount of expenditure on them will be very high. And as such, they will prefer the local government money to be used. And as such, they don't have enough funds to appoint, to, uh, to employ qualified uh, uh, people that will run the local government. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Chief Host. I hope I'm not taking too much time. Thank you very much, sir. It's always a privilege having you around. Uh, Most of our you. concerns about the local governments are being answered. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I believe we don't have further questions again because I can't see anyone's hands raised or questions in the chat box. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Hamidou Hamid, for this great and insightful class. We've been enlightened about the local governments and we are going to look back and do more practical measures on how to handle our local government better. Thank you very much, sir. Ah, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much for giving me this uh, golden opportunity. And then, please, members of the uh, literacy class, please gear up and then live up to expectation. Whatever you learn, please don't just keep it in your head. Try and implement uh, something. Uh, for example, Umm Salma, we, we, in my local government, we have uh, the plugging club that's always engaging youths to go and pack uh, polythene bags. And then we are engaging companies 
who buy all this uh, swan water bottle and the rest of them for recycling. So we are helping in tidying up the economy, uh, tidying up the environment. And at the same time, we are empowering the youth who are packing all those uh, uh, non-degradable weights off the street. So it's a very good move if you can also start that at the local, at your own local end. Uh, one is a form of revenue, <clears throat> one is a form of revenue generation for them. And then secondly, it's a form of cleaning the environment against uh, uh, any other things that are bad. Because those materials don't, they don't uh, get wasted. They destroy the soil, they destroy the climate, and they cause a lot of climate change problems and the rest of them. Thank you very much, all the participants, for your contribution and the rest. And uh, I hope uh, I've added a little value to you this afternoon, this evening, sorry. And Thank the guy you. from Somali, we will keep on discussing. Uh, if you ask the organizer, they'll give you my email so that, uh, okay, somebody is asking for you. I, I have my email in the slide, so we can communicate via the slide. Uh, I hope you make the slide available to the students. Yes, it's shared on the Telegram group. Oh, that's very good. That's very good. So you see there, you can contact me, especially the person for Somalia. I'm interested. And uh, Madam Salma, too. We can all chat. No problem. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, the presentation was shared on the Telegram group. Please go back and go over it again. And okay, the following announcements um take all information on the Telegram group very important because that is where every information will be dropped. And then parties were shared yesterday night with um the links to each party groups. Though we had um just um small glitch earlier this morning, but the link was recent. So you can still go back to the group and check for your party and the link and join in. We are all expected to join our party groups before okay. Wednesday, okay. as assignments will drop no, no, by Wednesday. Later. And also, um, to receive huh? certificates after no, this course, you'll be required to be at least 75 percent attendance and 80 percent of assignments. So let's I'll... all take this seriously because you don't want a situation so whereby at the end of the class you me. say I, I attended classes but I wasn't given a certificate. We will listen to that because all are being recorded. So please take note of all the information on the Telegram group. Join your party links from now to Wednesday. Thank you very much. If you have any question, you can chat up any of the admins um, on the Telegram group. Thank you very much. And have a good night rest. See you all next week, Friday, as we come back for more enlightening classes. Thank you.